What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Brad Steele channel, and I am so excited today to have uh, Voctiv's own, the Voice of Liberty's own, Drew Ochoa, right here on the channel. Drew, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and your schedule to hang out with us a little bit here on the channel. Thanks, Brad. Happy to be here. Looking forward to uh, talking about some cool stuff today. Absolutely. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. I'm excited to have you on. Um, Sweet. And I, and the first thing I want to talk about is kind of obviously we've we're still in the pandemic and the pandemic's raged on since a year and a half now. Um, how is it right now getting back into the swing of things with you know you had obviously everybody had to take time off last year and now you guys are kind of getting back to it. I see where you guys have got some live performances, uh, Voctiv coming up. How has it been getting back in the swing of things with coming back from COVID? Yeah, um, it's it's been very interesting and hmm. something that we're learning every day, every week. Uh, you know, things are changing just with protocols. I mean, yeah. to go back to the beginning, so my full-time job is uh, I sing with the Voices of Liberty at Walt Disney World um, hmm. in Epcot. And uh, I remember having just uh i actually had my so we're all in one year contracts right and so we were having our one year contract meeting discussing the the year a, a new contract starting in 2021 yeah. and during that meeting um one of the people in charge had turned and said i just received a call talking about walt disney world is going to be going to be shut down for like two weeks so that was kind of like weird, you know, I'm getting an offer for another year to stick around. Yeah. And, and then I'm also getting this news, like, you know, update, live update of saying we're going to be closed. So the, I mean, back then the idea was it was just going to be two weeks and then we would be right back at it. Like, oh, this is fine. We'll all figure this out and be back working. And then two weeks became a month and then a month became, you know, three months. And then, as we go, it's like six months. So I'm, so for myself, we were, it was two weeks off. And then I think they said, well, we're going to still keep you guys around for another month. And then after that, they decided to furlough basically all of their employees, wow. um, which I mean, I don't think, I've, I don't think many of us have ever experienced something like that, just being completely jobless. I mean, yeah. luckily still with the company. So uh, a lot of us seeked other types of work, um, doing a lot of online stuff. Uh, this program here, you know, Zoom has become a huge thing. <laughs> yeah, um, which thank God for it. I mean, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, and then in, I think it was either October or November, early November, maybe October, we ended up getting uh, uh, an email and a phone call saying, hey, the Voices of Liberty are coming back. Now, I think there are only a few groups, Dapper Dan's being one. Mm -hmm. um, if you're familiar, Dapper Dan's a Magic Kingdom barbershop quartet, which I'm sure we'll talk a lot about yes. a little bit. Um, they were brought back earlier. And I think there was only like maybe a handful of live entertainment that was brought back. Wow. Which, you know, it's, it's great that they came back, but it's also like, when are the rest of us going to come back? <laughs> Um, Je jealous jealous of them yeah 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 and and and, and it's a, and it's a different ball game too now because it's not the same show that we had mm -hmm. done before um same with the dappers they would just go around and stroll and, and be in front of people and the whole show now is you know being lined up mm -hmm. distance away from people um voices of liberty we used to be in this beautiful space this rotunda gorgeous marble floor um beautiful place to sing and now our show is outside across across from where we used to be on wow. an outside theater. And so we have microphones, um, monitor system, and we're all able to be socially distanced away. And that was kind of the start of a new territory for most of us. Um, mm -hmm. Someone like myself, I don't have a lot of experience with microphone singing, which is a whole new game. <laughs> oh yeah, and I'm just I'm just an acapella singer, or you know, I, right. I like to sing without anything. Um, so it, it's it's helped over this year to to gain a new skill and learn some microphone techniques, which is great. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it's it's interesting, you know. It's, it's really tough. Um, I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm thankful that 
I'm able to still make a living being a musician. And I know I'm one of the lucky few to be able to do that. So I try not to take it for granted. I mean, I know there's days that it's just like, I wish we were kind of doing the old style way we used to do things, but mm. at least we're still sharing music and offering something for the guests. Right. Um, in terms of Octave, you know, so I joined the group in the beginning of 2020 and they had done a spring tour um, that year. And I actually, well, it's, it's kind of like, welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the group. Here's uh, you know, everything. Yeah. <laughs> However, I never did the tour because I had other obligations already with yeah. work and, and some other outside barbershop stuff. So they did the tour, the whole world shut down. And mm. since then we've been trying to just pick ourselves back up and, yeah. and figuring out how we're going to do stuff. So obviously we recorded the, uh, the, um, the album last summer, the um, uh, Broadway album. Yes. And um and then we we did i think one show in november just a one-off show mm -hmm. um and that was cool it was nice to kind of like get ourselves out there see what it was like um then we had a couple things in christmas time just kind of like in town concert things and then we had one show in ape may out in texas and then just a few weeks ago we had another our first like we would say official show with myself and aaron stratton who's the other new guy in the group yeah um so that was like our first big show and in Florida. And it was great. It's just the perfect way to, to kind of come back and say, this is like, this is Vokt if here we are. Yeah. Um, and we had a lot of people from Orlando come and see the show, a lot of our fans and, you know, walking out on stage and just feeling that welcome of like, we're here and how much they're appreciative to say that mm -hmm. we, they're here with us. It was just overwhelming. Um, oh yeah. And I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. We had a great, great show. And um, so things are slowly picking up. Yeah. Slowly picking up. We have um, some shows actually this coming weekend. Um, and then we will be uh, doing some stuff during the holiday time. And it's good. We're, we're slowly getting back on our yeah. feet and where we want to go. You so, guys are actually, I just was looking yesterday, you guys are coming about 40 minutes from my house oh. uh, on December the 2nd, I believe. Uh, okay. So I might be I might be paying you a visit. The, Sweet, uh, yeah. I think Alabama, Huntsville, Huntsville. Huntsville. Okay, Huntsville. Awesome. Yeah. So I maybe yeah. I maybe I may be coming to see you. On, oh, uh, we'd, we'd love to meet you. Absolutely, I'd love to meet yeah. you guys. I, I was telling you before we started. I had a lot of people reach out with questions and topics they wanted me to bring up. Uh, Jeremy Padronis uh, wants to just go back to the very beginning. Where did your journey with singing start? And he also threw in that you are so good. So, uh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but thank he wants you to know much. where did the journey with singing uh, start for you? And Mike Webster asked the same question as well. Yeah, um, singing started for me in high school. Um, my sophomore year in high school. Before that, I was your typical sports athlete. Yeah. I played basketball, baseball, football, you name it. I wow. played it. Um, and I had done some theater in like elementary. I took a few acting lessons um, with some community theater. And I was just like, this isn't really for me. I'm not enjoying it. Started getting heavily involved in sports. Yeah. And um, a girl I was seeing in high school had actually said, hey, uh, we're doing West Side Story, and great I'm, show. Okay, great show. One, my favorite musical of all time, and yeah. I, I'm looking forward to the new, the, uh, yes. the new one coming out. Yes. Um, but at that time, I had no idea what West Side Story was. It's a musical. Uh, what's a musical? Is this some kind of talent <laughs> show or whatever? And uh, she uh, she said, no, it's just it's it's like a it's like a play when you sing and you dance. I'm like, okay, great. I have some experience doing that. Um, and so I auditioned out of the blue, just, I'll give it a shot. I went in and sang tonight, tonight for the audition. And I remember seeing the show director's jaw just drop. And I'm thinking like, okay, am I doing something wrong? <laughs> Is that a good thing <laughs> you know, or a bad thing? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So um, I finished the audition and then like a week later, they cast me as Bernardo. And ah, it was yes. just the coolest thing. And I was like, okay. Here I am um, trying this new thing. And that was kind of the the, the set off point. Um, and then in my junior and senior year, we did musicals. We did the Grease, ended up playing Danny Zuko in Grease. And then Ooh. Footloose uh, played Ren McCormick. Well, you guys did my some great year. shows. Yeah, we had we had an awesome stage and our, our crew, like our tech crew and construction crew built these awesome sets. I mean, for yeah. Greece, we had a we had an actual car on stage, which is really awesome. 
um and just a lot of lighting effects so we had i had a, i was definitely blessed having an awesome mm. uh strong music program to support all that and then um did choir my senior year and that kind of propelled me into going to college i went to bowling green state university in ohio okay. and uh i started out as a voice major then i transitioned to a music education major um mm. and then I went and got my master's and I switched back and got my master's in voice performance wow. and then in classical voice and stayed in Chicago area for a couple of years doing some uh, classical chorus work. Mm-hmm. And then I moved down to Florida and started the whole Disney yeah. scene. So it's kind of been jumping around a lot. Um, but yeah, to answer the original question, it started in high school and I've just kind of taken different routes and somehow have landed back to where it kind of began in, in a that's sense. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. It was ironically, 10th grade for me was also the first time I learned about musical theater. I had been singing my whole life, but I never knew about musical theater. And then and in my school didn't have a very strong music program, but we had one teacher who taught art survey, uh, Mr. Wright, and he was the band director and he we had gotten done with all of our stuff early and he was like well i'm gonna show you guys what musical theater is and he turned on the sound of music and mm. i was hooked um so yeah. I, got, yeah, I got i got the bug yeah, at that point that's awesome um and going off of that who would you i mean do you have who would you say are your biggest musical influences because not really knowing the gift you had until 16 you know years old who have been some of those musical influences? Is is it theater people? Or are there are there others that have been kind of musical influences for you as you've grown through all that? Yeah. Um, so I'd say starting out, I had no idea. I mean, my sophomore, junior year, and probably senior year, most of it, I, I was just kind of going with the flow. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't listen to anybody that I would consider as like a vocalist or yeah. a theater person. Mm-hmm. Um, Oddly enough, my favorite rock band is Incubus. Oh, wow. And yes, yes, and and their lead singer, Brandon Boyd, is probably the first person who inspired me to want to sing. Wow. Um, You know, you think of a rock band and yeah, they have some stuff that's kind of intense and Mm -hmm. but it's not like a heavy metal band. And his voice, I mean, it's just it's unbelievable the things that he can do and how smooth. (laughs) And so I would try to emulate those things. Right. And I feel like I owe some credit to him for teaching me some some mimicky tricks, Absolutely. Um, which is cool. But my senior year is kind of when I started getting into this barbershop world. Mm-hmm. And um, I definitely have a lot of influences from the barbershop scene. Um, but a good friend of mine who I met through barbershop had introduced me to David Phelps. We all know David. Yes. Is, I mean... Come on, he, he is, is he is the man. A not he is out. He is not of this earth. His he, his voice no. is is not from here. It's from the heavens. Right. What's funny too is that I learned more about him my senior year, but I remember watching the Oh Holy Night famous video mm-hmm. from like '98 or something. I remember watching <laughs> yeah. that early in high school, and I'm yep. like, this guy is unbelievable. The stuff that he does, and it turns out it's David. So yep. uh, I've. I followed him for most of his journey, even in up up until now. Um, his his hymns album that he produced a couple of years ago is one of my favorite albums of all time. Is that the one with um, "Goodbye World, Goodbye"? The really jazzy. Uh, um, e, uh, yes, yes, I yes. want to say yes. It's it's a great album. That was my favorite track off of it. Yeah, it's David is the man. Yes, and uh, he's the, I, he's I, kind of the standard. <laughs> he's like the standard. Yeah. I try to do things and I just can't, you know, I, I want to do the things that he does, but it just doesn't work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's a, he's one of my, one of my favorite people to listen to and um, inspiring to. Yeah. Um, but besides that, it's some barbershop people and my coworkers, I mean, Tiffany Coburn, who, you know, yes. Tiffany is one of the greatest singers of all time. Her voice is mm-hmm just pours out emotion and yeah. and um and an absolute stunning performer yes. watching i remember doing so in, in voices of liberty we have this uh we we used to do a fourth of july stage show 
and we would have some different arrangements that we wouldn't normally perform inside and we all be a mic and the national anthem was performed by a soloist and it was usually tiffany and i remember sitting out in the audience um i was just observing the set and she's singing this whole all these different verses from <laughs> the star spangled banner yep. and i was literally in tears just watching and there's nobody in the audience it's just her the rest of the voices and then a track playing mm -hmm. and just tears coming down my face because she's so moving and oh. i will never forget that experience and she does that with everything she sings yeah and she's she's one of those her voice in, in some weird way to me it reflects what a sweet person she is um her and her her and her husband chip um you know i i knew her from voices of liberty when i went and saw them and then i started this channel and they started commenting on the videos i was like oh my gosh like you know i love voctive i love the voices of liberty and everything and for christmas they sent me the nicest card in the mail i don't even know how they like knew where i was but they sent me the nicest card and they sent me a copy of you guys newest recording the the broadway main street um it was just like the sweetest thing and um he messaged me afterwards uh chip did and we talked a little bit just the nicest people and yep. um so the the beauty of her voice reflects the the beauty that she gives off just in life with her yes yeah um uh, yeah she that's is, awesome she's the real deal though she's the real mm -hmm. deal uh so let's talk about a club 44 records Mm -hmm. who uh so for those that don't know i'm a uh i'm on stowtown records me and my family are on stowtown records and uh that's a gospel label in nashville and the same people that run that also run club 44 records which is broadway standards and things like that and voctive just a couple weeks ago announced that you guys have officially signed with club 44 uh working with the great wayne hahn he is uh, spectacular he's he's one of the best um how exciting is this for everybody to to kind of join in with that because club 44 they haven't been around as long just a couple of years but they have really made a big splash in the in the scene there how exciting is that for you guys it's it's very exciting i think it's an opportunity that the group itself hadn't really expected to ever happen and now that this is a, a new um connection with the label and us i think it, the the horizon has been set so much higher now where we can mm -hmm. just go and and see what kind of opportunities come for us um we just uh finished recording a christmas album it's a deluxe version of spirit of the season wow with, uh, some some new tunes on there which i think you'll all appreciate and Great. sure we'll be seeing some reaction videos from brad here um sure will <laughs> and uh yeah and um they're actually that's our first album that will be with the label and we've already awesome. started understanding some like distribution things i'm one to not really talk about the super details about it of course yeah. um but again i i know that they're going to be an awesome team player and the same will be for us towards the label uh, we want to represent the label um as well as we can and yeah i think it's an exciting journey for us yeah. and I'm, I'm just, I don't know what else to say besides I'm just excited yeah. and it's really cool to be part of a label. I'm actually going to be in the studio with Wayne Thursday. We're, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, well, tell him we said hello. I will do it. I will do it. And we met him. He came down for the kind of like the listening party for the Christmas yep. album. First time I met him. Now, Tiffany obviously knows him. Right. Because I'm pretty sure, she, or I think she's. She's, she, she's on the label too. She's on the okay. same label we are. Yeah. Right, right, right. So she's known Wayne and um mm -hmm. we met him maybe once just kind of in passing um, um let's go ahead and talk about the barbershop stuff because i before uh you know i announced this this interview and i was opening up for people i didn't know about the stuff that you'd done with that so could you and, and a lot of people that listen to voctive and know about the voices of liberty they also may not know kind of about all that's that's happened with you and that kind of thing because that's been a huge part of your musical journey uh yeah. so what what's the story with that yeah uh for, first and foremost i feel like the barbershop community and the the style of singing barbershop all of those aspects of barbershop have brought me to where i am today yeah um the start of it happens in high school 
Mm -hmm. Again, one of these things, what is barbershop? What is this? I'm already doing <laughs> musicals. Why do I have to do any more? Why do I have to be barbershop? Am I going to get a yeah. haircut or something? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and so um, some friends in, in, in choir in high school had been talking about this thing called Harmony Camp. Happens in the summertime. It's a week long. Um, I'm like, I don't want to go to Harmony Camp. I don't, what is this? This is weird. This is weird kind of music. I'm not interested. <laughs> and so I... I chose not to take interest. That was actually the, the my junior going into my senior year. Um, my senior year, my choir teacher had asked myself and three other guys if we wanted to be in a barbershop quartet for a high school contest. Well, contest, you know, Mr. Competitive over here, sports and sports. Of course, <laughs> right. I want to do a contest. I want to win well. something. So uh, I joined this quartet with um, three other guys who I'd sung with in choir. And I, I sang tenor in my teacher gave me a learning track just had the tenor part to it and some sheet music which i couldn't read but obviously i can read the words so i'll use that as my <laughs> reference and uh learn just kept listening to this track put this put these two songs together and the the goal was to do this high school competition and if you win the competition you end up getting full tuition to that harmony camp thing yeah so I'd slowly started getting pulled into this barbershop stuff. I found out one of my math teachers was in, it was into barbershop. He would come to after school rehearsals and barbershop is kind of known for this thing of singing tags. And basically it's, you think of it as the coda or, you know, the hook at the end of jazz song. Um, basically the last few measures or so you, you learn your parts and you sing with four other or three other people and you sing a barbershop tag. Right. So I started doing that like oh this is so cool like we're ringing chords and making these weird sounds and it just it sounds great so that got me more interested in barbershop we did this high school competition we won but there were only three other quartets so i guess i say we would have <laughs> hey a win, a win yeah a win yeah. is a win <laughs> yeah so um end up getting this full ride to uh, this this harmony camp thing so that this was happening during the school year. Harmony Camp wasn't for months until later. Um, and once I graduated, I was still doing community theater and we were doing another production of West Side Story. Mm -hmm. and this time I actually ended up playing Tony. Okay. And um, the person who was playing Bernardo, I knew was a barber shopper because he went to a different high school, um, but his high school teacher was a big time barber shopper. And he had encouraged people to sing. And so I met him and he, and to this day, he is my best friend. We've, we've mm -hmm. known each other since wow. he was the one that really, really got me hooked into barbershop. Uh, his name is Nicholas Gordon. And, um, he's actually singing in the group called, um, Highline. It's okay. a vocal jazz ensemble. And they're actually opening for Voctive at the New Jersey show this wow. weekend, which is really cool. Wow. Um, so that's got to be kind of a full circle moment for you and your and your buddy there to, oh yeah. to have gone from community theater west side story to to now you're yeah. both on the same show that's crazy yes and it, it all just kind of happens by accident i guess yeah. to say the least. um so i met him he's talking to me about barbershop this and that and da, 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 da. we end up deciding over a, a summer or a few months that we want to go to school to sing barbershop hmm. And for, for, for college. So Bowling Green State University had this huge, rich history, lots of roots of great barbershop quartets. The chorus, the men's chorus was known for singing these awesome arrangements. Um, and that's what we had our, our self set on. Yeah. So we went to Bowling Green State University. The program wasn't, there wasn't a lot of barbershop left. That was kind of maybe 10 years before we had gotten there. Right. Um, so we figured, okay, well, we got to start something on our own. We love this too much to just let this go. So we started um, a barbershop quartet called Prestige, and they had these competitions in the barbershop world. Every year, there's an international convention that happens the week of 4th of July, wherever 4th of July sits, that's the week. Mm -hmm. And um, the competition would feature a bunch of choruses and a bunch of quartets, and then they would have a college contest. And yeah. it was just kind of like this fun thing to do for young singers. And so we entered the contest and we wanted to win the contest. Went out the first year, we got fourth. We went out the second year, we got second. And then the next year we ended up winning the college contest. Wow. And for us, that's a huge thing. We're like, oh, we're college champs, da, 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 this and yeah. that. There's this competition and that's kind of like the the big thing. You know, you go mm -hmm. and you see all the great quartets and 
Um, they So we won the college contest, did a handful of shows. There's a lot of chapters, even I'm sure in Alabama area, yeah. there are local barbershop chapters. You can go and there'd be a chorus of guys and mm-hmm. um, they're meeting every Tuesday nights or Monday nights for a couple hours and just yeah. singing songs. And so often they're preparing for this competition or maybe just for their annual shows to put on. Um, so it's kind of like a an underground scene. You don't really hear a lot about it. You know, you think a barbershop quartet is just guys in a, a straw hat and some pinstripe vest, but right. it's it's a lot more than that. It has been, and it's and it has evolved um, very much over yeah. the last even even say even ten years, wow. but in, you know twenty or thirty years. So, um, went to college, did a lot of barbershop. I stopped singing barbershop because I wanted my voice teacher had, um, had wanted me to pursue my master's degree in, in classical voice. Mm-hmm. So I went off to Chicago, stopped singing barbershop, was just focusing on classical singing, being an operatic tenor. Um, and that was fun for a while, but you know, being bit by the barbershop bug, it's <laughs> just like, there's something in you that says, I can't let this go. Right. So I started getting back into barbershop and another quartet that, I competed against in the college contest. They they um, placed third that year when we placed first. The one of their members was stepping down, and they were in the Chicago, they're the Illinois area, and they said, "Well, Drew lives in this area. Let's maybe reach out to him and see if he's interested in singing barbershop again. We haven't mm. seen him in a while." So I ended up joining this quartet, which is After Hours. Um, yeah. And at that time, After Hours was now years later competing in the the big competition not the college competition anymore because you you age out i think after 25 you have to go into the big competition yeah. and this is like the oh my gosh we all want to be a part of this big competition we want to win so uh-huh. they were doing well they got 16th one year they got eighth the following year and then i joined um and now it's just this journey of going on and trying to to win this contest so um 2015 Went to contests. We got eighth, 2016th. We got sixth, and then 17th we got third, and then in 2018 we ended up winning the entire yeah. competition. Yeah. And for someone, you know, 2006 me, high school, <laughs> this was like the like, oh my gosh, I, that would be so cool to be a part of that. Right. And here I am. Uh, what is it? 12 years later, winning mm. the entire thing, which is just it's so cool. I moved down here in 2000 down to Florida. Um, in 2015. So I just joined that quartet. Uh, there is, um, so there was as a member of Octave named Tony mm-hmm. DeRosa. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, w- he left the group and Tony is like one of the most, if not arguably the most famous barbershopper of all time. He's just always doing stuff. People want his advice, mm-hmm. super knowledgeable guy. He is actually also the musical director for the Dapper Dan's and the Voices yes. of Liberty. Okay. Wow. Yes. And, um, he was the musical director for Finding Nemo. Sadly, the Nemo show has been officially closed, which is wow. absolutely devastating. That is horrible. Uh, yes. Yes. COVID. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my connection through Barbershop with him, I'm not going to say like it was him that actually got me the job here because he only plays a small part of it. But again, having that connection in Barbershop with, sure. with him and knowing him over the years has brought me the opportunity to come down here and say, hey, this might be a fit for you. So I yeah. uh, came down, auditioned, and ended up being a Dapper Dan. So I still yeah. maintained the barbershop thing. So I was a Dapper Dan for that's two years. That's amazing. So that's kind of, that's a small version of the yeah, barbershop yeah. scene. That's so uh, fascinating. Because like I said, I of course I know about Voctive and the Voice of Liberty. But when people started reaching out, talking about all of the barbershop stuff with you, I was like, I had no idea about, about, that, about that aspect of your musical career thus far. So that's incredibly fascinating. Eve S says, do you have a favorite song? And I guess this would refer more back to, to Voctive. Do you have a favorite song that you all have done? It's a two part question. That's the first okay. part. So do you have a favorite song that you all have done? And part B, do you have a cover that you would like to do with the group? Favorite song that we have, I'm assuming live. Perf- I'm going to say this is live. Um, I don't, what do you she, think? She didn't specify. I would say that you've done even on on a, on the album or or anywhere. I would I would think on the, favorite favorite arrangement maybe. Yeah. On the album, the favorite thing that we've done is the Prince of Egypt medley. Mm. That is 
an absolute masterpiece. Yeah. And Jamie is his gift to arrange is unbelievable. Right. And yeah, I just got goosebumps thinking about the song. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. the, 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 the medley, um, I'd say. But in terms of performing, mm-hmm. favorite song that we've performed. Um, honestly, I love the trolley song from yes. the new album as well. Yeah. The trolley song is it's just so fun. It's a oh, fun yeah. song to do. You just kind of get a groove going. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say I'd say those two definitely. Something that I would like us to do. Um, that's a tough one. Yeah, that is a tough one. I think it would be cool to do like a Les Mis medley. Ah, there you go. Which would be which would be pretty cool. I think yeah. we have some great voices that we could showcase. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. There's a lot of great music out there. I hope I know they did like a jazz um, album before somewhere. There's music, it was just like all jazz standards. Yeah. I think another one of those would be great just to feature some, there's a lot of great music out there that yeah. um, I think we could introduce people to. Um, I think we've even discussed the thought about maybe doing like a um, an all stars album where we just pick songs that everybody knows, like this artist is known for that song. Yeah. And we kind of just kind of feature all of these. I think that would be kind of cool to do. Very much. Yeah. Um, but who knows? Who knows? But yeah. Well, you, need, you need to start a petition to do a uh, West Side Story medley. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> That's how you got your start, man. Yeah. Maybe you I could do all the parts of Maria. Yes, time. absolutely. Yeah. So, Movie Bliss wants to know, and you kind of already answered this, if there's any new music in the works. You already talked about the uh, Christmas thing that you guys have done with Club 44. Mm -hmm. But the second part of her question, and this is interesting, will you guys be doing any more music videos for songs that you've already done on previous albums? Ooh. I don't know the answer to that. Mm. But it could be cool. However... I think the only thing that might be weird is just the fact that there are different members in the group. Sure. And I'm not sure how that would go across um, yeah. or come across. Um, but uh, you never know. And yeah. if there's a song that people are really itching to hear and seeing a live video um, or, or some form of video, it could be cool. Yeah. Um, I, I just watched the, I'd obviously heard the 90s TV medley on the album. I just watched the video for the first time the other day. That had to be a blast. I mean it the was. the the very like Saved by the Bell uh kind of background that you guys had. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. The fun yeah. the fun outfits, the hair, like it was so. I mean, it obviously <laughs> had to be '90s because '90s TV medley. But so that just kind of inspires us. Hey, this is going to be really fun and exciting. And then they just say, "This is the wardrobe we're kind of looking for. Just whatever you feel like wearing, you wear it." Yeah. Which is interesting about that one because the shirt I wore for that video. I think Kurt had gotten the same shirt and he was upset because I had already wow. recorded my part and he was like, oh, it's the same shirt. So I think he had to write or wear something else. Wow. Um, but again, you know, it's always like, Oh, well, hopefully I don't wear anybody, anybody else's outfit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, there's, they're super fun. And, and we have another video coming out. I don't know if I can say what it is, but it's something from the album and it's, I think it's almost done, but again, another cool concept, um, of adam who puts it together he he came up with a really cool concept that i think everybody will enjoy yeah. again it's along those the playful um boxy kind of stuff happening and i, th- I think it's fun so yeah be on the lookout for that i i didn't even i i didn't have it on my list of things to ask about but going off of that you talking about the the fun music video for the 90s thing contrast that with you know you guys did you will be found um had the virtual choir come in i had a couple friends that that sent in they were in the virtual choir with you guys i mean that had to be i would imagine a very meaningful thing to put that message out during i mean that album came out last year when all of this covid stuff was still new and people were scared and confused sometimes we're still scared and confused to this day um I mean, that had to be very gratifying to know that you're bringing people together, even though they're apart, they're sending in videos to, to send out a message like that. I mean, could you guys kind of feel that of just like, this is a message. I mean, this is a song, a lot of, especially theater people know, but it, it hits a little different when you put it in the uh, current times that we've been in. I mean, did you guys kind of feel that way? Yeah. Just, and a, and a more broader spectrum of that 
we didn't realize that after we finished the album, all of our songs on there really tied into what was happening in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and listen to the entire album, it almost tells like a story. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's a message and there is a um, a strong message in each of those songs on the album that I think resonates with somebody that has dealt something with during COVID. Yeah. Um, and that song of all is 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 right there. I mean, the words, mm -hmm. the words alone just touch home. Yeah. And um, with COVID happening, it's like I think everybody needed to hear that. Same thing with the last the last song on the album, Someday. Oh, I mean, yeah. Super powerful, super powerful and, and kind of sad, of course, you know, yeah. knowing the context. But again, you can you can take those words and, and, and re re apply them to your own life. It doesn't have to be in the context of how they were written and set in. Um, but yeah, there's just that whole album is beautiful. And, and it's nice to know that people say, hey, there was a track on here that really spoke to me and this is what I needed to hear. If that's what it's about, that's what yep. it's about. We're, and, but I don't think we ever, we never planned that. We never said, well, this is, we want to make sure we'd say this and we want to make sure we say that it just organically happened that way. And yep. that's, what's even more special is because we right. didn't plan it. Um, but the whole virtual choir thing, I mean, that's amazing that we had so many submissions yeah. people that wanted to be a part of it. And then to see the end result, you know, like right before they come in, they come in in the video and you've had just us on there and then we slowly fade. And then you just see all these boxes of yes. people. It's just, it's so cool. Right. It's it, like that weird way of, even though we were all apart at that time coming together right. in, our, in our own way, the best way we could, you know, it's yeah. incredible. And to sing that message. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was great. And I think you would agree as a singer, as an artist, and I, I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter. When somebody says, you know, your song, your rendition of this song helped pull me out of a, you know, of a dark place. I, it's just, there's nothing more gratifying. Two more questions and we're out of here. The first sure, one, um, Vokta has done a lot of collabs with different artists through the years. David Phelps, like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, they've done some others. Is there anybody that you would kind of push for Voctive to collaborate with? Is there anybody that you're like, man, I hope we bring yeah. them in? I know we all really would love to have Dick Van Dyke do something oh with us. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. That would be incredible. It would be so cool. And here's the thing, Dick Van Dyke also did something. Um, he, he sings in a barbershop quartet and they yes. came to one of our conventions. Wow. So again, one of those little full circle things would be kind of cool. Yeah. And he's just an inspiration and yeah. it would be awesome. It, I think that would be my first pick mm. is to have and so anybody out there. You know. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, and he's still going strong. I mean, he looks mm -hmm. great. Last question. We've talked about music all day. The, the barbershop, the Voctive voices of Liberty. So to close out, what are some other things that you are interested in? What are some other things outside of music that if you have a free day, if you've got a day to yourself uh, to get away from performing, what are some other things that you're interested in just to let people know yeah. a little bit more about uh, you? Yeah. Um, not a ton of stuff, honestly. I mean, kind of outside of music, but not really is that um, – I take interest in coaching and um, I'm part of this. So the, the, the barbershop stuff, we have the judges that judge these contests. Um, I've just earned my candidate status to be a judge. Wow. And that's something I put a lot of my free time into doing because it's nothing paid or anything. Um, but I'm always up for like working with people, um, mm -hmm. you know, teaching lessons or just helping with sure. groups find, you know, what their story is. That stuff I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, I like to read. There you go. I do. Um, so I know Amazon Prime has this uh, <laughs> free book a month thing. So I yeah. usually find something there to read on. Um, yeah. I'm also like a big kind of tech nerdy person. Okay. And uh, I love playing video games. I mean, it's just my way to decompress. Yeah. And just kind of just come home. I've had a long day. I just want to, you know, get on my, my PC and, and play something. Yeah. Um, another cool little thing, a little side hobby that I've done is I've actually built my own mechanical keyboard from pretty much wow. scratch and actually have it right here. I think I can plug it. I've built this keyboard from scratch. Wow. Yes. 
That and is awesome. By scratch, I mean even the keycaps itself. Yeah. Under here is a PCB board. And yeah. You know, I had to solder all the pieces <laughs> for the for the switches, and it just has a glorious sound. It's you know, you think of whatever, but you just oh yeah, yeah, just it's just so satisfying. So um, a very expensive hobby and something <laughs> I've gotten into, but um, I picked out the keycaps and everything. Um, I have some more coming in. Wow. And yeah, there's just it's just something dumb that I love to do. Man, Drew, thank you so yeah. much for hanging out with us today on the channel. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, be on the lookout. Uh, Voctive, they're getting back into the swing of things, getting back on the road, doing shows. So be looking to see if they're coming to a city near you, like they're coming to a city near me in December. And Drew, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Brad. Appreciate you having me.